Shalom. Kolo Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Chakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone, as well as you sincere Akim and Akwath out there diligently laboring, listening, pushing his truth to the four corners of the earth. All right, to you I say Shalom. Now, as you can see, the title of the lesson are all foods clean. And you might be asking, brother, why are you asking are all foods clean? Of course, all foods are not clean. But in fact, the answer to that question is yes, all foods are clean. All right. Now, you may at this point be like, what do you mean all foods are clean? The most high separated certain things to be unclean and certain things to be clean you're absolutely right so the reason why i say all foods are clean is because the most high established in the scriptures what food is for us so by that definition of what food is yes all foods are clean so first we in the book of leviticus 11 which is where you find what meats specifically that the Most High sanctified, which means set apart to be clean, and those that he uh, set apart to be unclean, all right? The clean animals have their function upon the planet Earth, as well as the unclean creatures, all right? Now, in the beginning, we know that the Most High originally set us up to be vegetarians, but after the flood, the Most High allowed us to uh, have meat because obviously after the flood everything was destroyed there wasn't you know uh, enough green herbs upon the planet that man could just sustain himself from plants alone so the, so the most high permitted man to be able to eat meats all right the most high blessed that all right so here we are in the book of Leviticus 11 we're gonna start at verse 1 <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever part is the hoof, and is cloven footed, and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Alright, so the Most High specifically gave what type of animals, what type of beasts, are okay or clean according to the dietary law to be eaten all right so it must part the hoof must be cloven footed and it must chew the cud all right that's that's the qualification for the beast on the land that the most high sanctified to be eaten now let's let's go ahead and read down so verse 4 says nevertheless these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud all right, so there are also other beasts that the Most High set apart to not be eaten. All right, and it says, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he chews the cud, but divideth not the hoof. Okay, the camel is an animal that, yes, he do chew the cud, but he has a paw. So according to uh, the Bible, according to the scriptures, that creature would be unclean. He is not uh, safe to eat, according to the law. All right. Verse five, and the coney, because he chews the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Now a coney is a uh, type of rabbit. You know, it's, it's, it's a it's a type of rabbit uh, creature. All right. So the rabbit, you can't eat no type of rabbits, no no type of squirrel. All right, no type of rodents, period, because some of them chew the cud, but they don't divide the hoof. They have a paw, <clears throat> all right, like a dog or a cat. So those are unclean. Verse 6, and the hare, which is another type of rabbit, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. Verse 7, now this is the big one, all right, and the swine, okay, which is a pig, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven footed all right so the pig divide the hoof and he cloven footed yet he cheweth not the cud he is unclean to you 
okay so these are just some examples of beasts that the most high gave that are not to be eaten that are, that are, are not considered clean so these beasts here according to the scriptures would not be considered food okay this is not something that you eat all right now real quick let's let's look up the definition of food let's see what food is real quick all right so this is just a simple google definition it says any nutritious substance that people or animals eat or drink or that plants absorb in order to maintain life and growth okay so it says any nutritious substance that people or animals eat all right so pertaining to the scriptures the most high outlined what food is okay all food really is is what you consume in your body to maintain life and support growth all right so everything cannot be food because only things that will maintain your life and support growth <laughs> are food all right so in the scriptures the most high tells you what is important uh or, or what is okay to maintain your life and support your growth all right these creatures here he gave you the outline says in verse 8 of their flesh shall ye not eat and their carcass shall ye not touch they are unclean to you okay then it goes on to give you the beasts that live in the waters it says these shall ye these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters whatsoever has fin and scales in the waters in the seas and in the rivers them shall ye eat okay so uh your salmon you know uh whiting all right any creature that live in the water that has fins and scales those you can eat okay verse 10 and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters they shall be an abomination unto you so if 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 the creature that live in the in in, in the, the water don't have fins and scales that's not to be eaten that's not considered food according to the bible okay so your crab your shrimp your your lobster oysters all right creatures such as that okay whale um shark you know different creatures like that those are not to be eaten they, according to the scriptures they are unclean and an abomination unto the children of israel they shall be even an abomination unto you ye shall not eat of their flesh but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters that shall be an abomination unto you all right so the most high clearly outlines in the book of leviticus chapter 11 what is food and what is not all right and christians will tell you that you know christ came to do away with the dietary law now we can eat whatever we want to eat right and see christians err in not reading the old testament you see you can't understand the new testament without having a thorough understanding of what was written in the old testament understand because all that was written in in uh, the old testament that contains the law the prophets right which in the new testament Yahweh Shai came to fulfill, all right? But these things still apply because we're not under the new covenant yet, because the laws are not written in our inward parts. We still sin. So for the children of Israel, these things still apply. Okay, that's why we had to undergo judgment because we broke these things. We we transgressed the commandments of the Most High. All right, this, this is just one part of it. This is just the dietary law, okay, which we still have to keep to this day and we're going to get a scripture on that all right but clearly the most high outlines here what is clean and what is unclean all right now you may have some people out there that say well that's the law of moses the law of moses is done away with number one you can't prove that the law of moses was done away with because no such thing exists you can't find in the bible nowhere where it says that the law of moses was done away with it's really it's not even the law of moses it's the law of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So now let's go ahead to the book of Genesis, 
chapter 7 because even before the time of Moses, the Most High distinguished what was clean and unclean. But it wasn't a written law that was written down. Okay, it, it was a it was an oral law. All right, and we're gonna get it right now. So it says here, the book of Genesis, chapter seven, verse one. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every beast, of every clean beast, thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female. And of the beasts that are not clean, by two, the male and his female. All right, so clearly here, the Lord makes a distinction between the beasts that are clean and the beasts that are not clean. Okay, so this distinction was already made since the beginning of creation. It's just that when it came to the time of Moses, the children of Israel was just coming out of the land of Egypt and they didn't know the Lord. They didn't know the ways of Yahweh Bashib Yahushai. So with that new generation coming out of that land, because you have to understand that at that time, the children of Israel, they were still living under the Egyptian customs. They was eating all kinds of unclean food and practicing all kinds of wicked practices. So the law had to be given to them at that time so they could know how to serve the Lord, what, what pleased the Lord. Understand that part of that was the dietary law. Understand which that the dietary law had always been so. Okay? Because here in verse 2 it tells you to take the clean beast by sevens and to take the unclean by two. Now the Most High did that for a reason. The Most High told Noah to take more of the clean beast because you can use the, the uh, clean beast for food. You're going to eat the clean beast. You're not going to eat the unclean. You see? So you want to have more of the clean beasts upon the earth than you have of, of, of uh, the unclean. Okay, because really the the unclean beasts, they were created to be scavengers upon the earth. They were created to clean up the earth. That's that's the purpose to why the Most High created the swine and uh, the vulture and the shark and in different unclean beasts that is, you know, marked as unclean. The Most High created those beasts to clean up the earth to help keep the earth clean they are the natural garbage disposers of the lord that's the purpose why he created them you see so the lord said take more take the clean beast by seven and the unclean by two okay the most high did that for a reason all right so we can see here that yahweh bashim yahweh established what is clean and what is unclean from the very beginning of creation at the time of noah and the same thing was with Adam. But like I said, it was an oral law that was passed down. Understand? It just came, it just happened. So uh, by the time of Moses, they didn't know nothing about clean and unclean. So it had to be introduced to them in the form of the law that was given to Moses by the Most High. All right, simple understanding. Now, let's go ahead and deal with this real quick. Because there's some verses that people take out of context that they don't understand because they don't read the Old Testament to understand the full spectrum of the Bible. Okay. They just pick up the Bible, go to the New Testament and read certain things, not understanding what was written in the law order in, in uh, the prophets to get a well-rounded understanding of what the Bible is talking about. So you can't understand that way. You have to be well-versed in the Old Testament to understand the New. That's the only way of which you can understand the Bible. Because a lot of what's written in the New Testament lines up with what is in the Old Testament. Alright? So now, this is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to jump down to verse 4. Alright? Well, let's, let's, let's uh, start verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Is that not what we see in today? All these doctrines of devils going out, teaching that you can eat what you want to eat, that you can love who you want to love, that you can do what you want to do, and it's all good. Which that's not what the Bible says. That's that's not the most high is not with that. See? So it's a lot of doctrines of devils out here. It's not according to what the words say. 
All right. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry. Salakia. Says forbidding to marry and commanding to, ab to abstain from meats. Which Yahweh hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Okay. So it said in commanding to abstain from meats, which Yahweh hath created to be received. Now, what what meats did you, did Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah create to be received with thanksgiving? If you go back to the book of Leviticus, the eleventh chapter, it tells you the the uh, meats that the Lord created to be received with thanksgiving, the meats that the Lord blessed and sanctified to be eaten. And it says of them which believe and know the truth. So for those of us that believe and know the truth of what the Bible says, we understand what beasts are okay according to the law to be eaten. All right. And it says for every creature of Yahweh is good. Now, why is every creature of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah good? For the purpose that he created it for. All right. The most high create the swine for a reason. He create the dog for a reason. He create the fowls in the heaven for a reason. Even the beasts that live in the waters for a reason. So, yes, everything is good according to the purpose that the most high created it for and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now, a lot of people, Christians, especially, they'll stop right there and say, see, the most high said and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Right. But let's read on so we can understand what is not to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, because every all type of meats cannot be received with thanksgiving. OK, for it is sanctified by the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh and prayer. OK, so by this, by, by verse five, it clears up what verse four is talking about. If you believe and know the truth. OK. For it is sanctified by the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah in prayer. Now, what meats were sanctified, which means sanctified means to be set apart. All right. To be holy. That's that's all the that sanctified means. Matter of fact, just for edification. Let's get it. So this is the definition for sanctify. Set apart as or declare holy to consecrate okay so for an example right if i have if i got some chickens and crabs in a room right and i come into that room and i separate the chickens from the crabs and i take the chickens and i put them in another room and leave the crabs in that in that same room right what have i done i have separated i have and I say that these chickens, these are my chickens, but them crabs, them crabs is not mine. Y'all can do whatever y'all want with them crabs, but these chickens right here, these chickens is mine. Don't touch them. I put them in this room because I want them to be away from everything else. These chickens is special to me, right? So what have I done? I've made a separation. I've separated the holy from the unholy. <laughs> you understand? So it's the same thing that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai did with the beast that he created to be clean and unclean. You see, now let's go back to the verse because Christians take this to mean that everything can be received with thanksgiving and that everything is sanctified. Now we just looked at the definition of sanctified, which means to set apart as or declare holy. So if you believe that everything has been set apart, then that's that doesn't make any sense because obviously to have something set apart you have to be separating it from something else understand if everything is in the same category then it can't be holy it can't be set apart it can't be sanctified understand so when we go back to the law of leviticus 11 the lord sanctified he blessed certain meats to be eaten and certain meats to not be eaten those that he blessed that are clean, those are the meats that are sanctified. Those that he did not bless and, and called unclean, he told you not to eat those meats, right? So those would be the unsanctified meats, the meats that he did not set apart to be holy. 
Understand? If 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 uh if the unclean and the clean are, are, are all together, then there would be no distinction. But the most high clearly separated and told you what is clean and what is unclean. That's why it says which Yahweh hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. You understand you have to have a thorough understanding of the Old Testament, the law and the prophets to understand what the New Testament is saying. You can't just pick up the Bible and start halfway if, and, and, you know, think that you know something. You don't know nothing. You have to start from the beginning to the end. You don't you don't start a movie from the end and, and watch it to the beginning because you're going to be confused. You're not going to know what happened before that. You're not going to have any context as to why the movie ended the way it did. You understand? So that's why the Most High set things up like this. So this is the understanding <clears throat> of 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 4 through 5. Okay? For, for it is sanctified. Okay? Now just for edification, let's get into that word sanctified. Let's see what that word is in the Greek. Sanctified is Hagaz Hagiaso. Let's hear Esau say. Strong's G37 Hagiazo. Hagiazo. Which means to set apart, to be made holy. See? So that's the word in the Greek. So, like I said, you have to know what's in the Old Testament, what the Most High set up to be clean and unclean in the old testament to understand these scriptures man now let's go ahead and get another one and uh do i want to get matter of fact yeah let's go ahead and get acts 10 because acts 10 is a big one because you know this is the one where they say god out of his own mouth said that you can eat whatever you want clean and unclean right let's go ahead and get it now we're going to read, we're going to read up a little bit so we can get the context of what this is talking about. All right, so this is Acts 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared Yahweh with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh all way. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day angel of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh coming into him and saying unto him Cornelius and when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it Lord and he said unto him the, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before Yahweh and thou send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter he lodgeth with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them unto Joppa. <clears throat> on the morrow, as they went on the journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Okay, so the context of this is three men okay which Yahweh had ordained to travel and to meet Peter were coming to visit him all right because the most high was trying to show Peter something all right he wanted Peter to have an experience okay so this is the context of Acts chapter 10 now it says on the morrow as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour and he became very hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Okay, so you can see in verse 10 here, they was already making food for Peter to eat because he was hungry. He, Peter hadn't eaten and he fell into a trance. Okay, so they was already making food. Mind you, it wasn't nothing unclean. Okay, because it's going to show you. In a, uh, a couple verses down that Peter says I've never eaten anything uncommon or unclean so they wasn't cooking no unclean food they wasn't making no crab shrimp and lobster for Peter to eat just to make that clear so it says in verse 11 and saw heaven open 
and a certain vessel descended unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him rise peter kill and eat but check this out but peter said no peter said not so lord for i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean now keep in mind that this is about 10 years after yahweh shai had completed his ministry all right so if they had learned from yahweh shai that you can eat whatever you want that you can eat unclean foods then why would peter say here i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean that shows you that peter was still keeping the law even after the, the departure of the messiah okay so that's something important to keep in mind here that even after the ministry of yahweh shai after he ascended up to heaven they were still keeping the law the law was not done away with man because they were still keeping it they were still observing the dietary law all right that's clear to see here verse 15 and the voice spake unto him again the second time what yahweh hath cleansed that call not thou common this was done thrice and the vessel was received again into heaven now keep this thrice in mind because the lord said this to peter three times okay keep that in mind because when we read down you're going to see why the lord told peter this three times okay acts 10 verse 17 now while peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean behold the men which were sent from cornelius had made inquiry from simon's house and stood before the gate now you can see in verse 17 that peter himself was confused about what the vision meant all right because he said no lord i've not eaten anything uncommon or unclean so no unclean food ever entered peter's mouth okay now if you never read the old testament how 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 would you know what creatures are clean and unclean you wouldn't know because you don't under because you you're not well versed in the old testament in the law in the in the book of leviticus 11 it tells you what creatures are clean and unclean that's how you know so once again very important to be well versed to study the old testament to understand the new testament because a lot of it well all of it lines up you understand so it says now while peter doubted in himself what this vision meant now if peter was carnal he could have easily seen the vision and been like yeah well this is it. the lord is showing me that i can eat whatever i want to eat now that nothing is, is is uh sanctified no more e everything is fair game to be eaten right but peter knew that there was a deeper meaning to the vision that the most high was trying to show him that's why he doubted in himself what this vision should mean peter was wondering well what is the most high trying to show me but he about to find out all right so the men that cornelius uh sent stood before the gate verse 18 and called and asked whether simon which was surnamed peter was, was lodged there while peter thought on the vision the spirit said unto him behold three men seek thee now remember when the lord said this was done thrice that the lord said unto him three times kill and eat kill and eat kill and eat right the lord said it three times and then what happened behold three men seek thee see that so the lord said that three times to peter to basically let him know that three men are coming to you all right so the thrice the three times that the lord said kill and eat that represented the the three men that were coming to uh, hold inquiry of peter all right acts 10 verse 20 arise therefore and get thee down and go with them doubting nothing for i have sent them all right verse 21 then peter went down to the men which was sent unto him from cornelius and said behold i am he whom ye seek what is the cause wherefore ye are come and they said cornelius the centurion a just man and one that feareth yahweh and of good report among all the nation of the jews 
All right, something important to keep in mind that Cornelius was an Israelite. Okay, it said, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews. Okay, so he was an Israelite serving in the Roman army. Okay, just like now, today you have a lot of Israelites serving in the Roman army. All right, but that's another lesson for another day. We can get more in depth into that. But this is mainly about clean and unclean food, so I'm going to stick to that. It says, was warned from Yahweh by an holy angel to send for to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. OK, so now we understand the context of what that's talking about. It's not talking about Peter just eating anything that you want to eat. OK, now we're going to find out what the conclusion is. We're going to find out what Peter finally found out what the Lord was trying to show him. All right. So let's jump down to. Let's start at verse 25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter took him up, saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But Yahweh has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. <laughs> See that? That he should not call any man. He said, the Most High showed me in that vision that I should not call any man common or unclean. Okay, so that was the conclusion of the vision. Okay, you can't eat a vision. All right, the Most High shows you a vision for a deeper spiritual meaning. It's not only only if you're carnal will you take that uh, vision to mean that you can eat unclean things which the most high would never tell his servants to do such a thing because the most high is the same today yesterday and tomorrow he don't change so how was it that he could say that something that he created something to be unclean since the beginning of time and then turn around and say now you can eat it that's a contradiction with the most high and the most high is not the author of confusion man that's why you have to understand the old testament but it even tells you here what the conclusion of the vision was. Okay, Peter didn't say that Yahweh has showed me that we can eat unclean things now. That wasn't the conclusion of the vision. Understand? So these are the, you know, verses that people without understanding take out of context to use for their own, uh, you know, personal lust. All right? Now hold on, let's that's a scripture. That's uh let's get that real quick. Give me one second, Salakia. Yeah. Some of y'all brothers already know a scripture I'm about to bring up. <laughs> Alright, so let's jump to uh second Peter. Second Peter chapter three. Let's jump down to verse 16, okay? Now, this is talking about Paul's letters, okay? Brother Peter, this is Brother Peter speaking on Paul's letters. And it says, An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, which mean letters, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Okay, so because some of these scriptures are hard to understand, which is the way that Paul writes. Paul, I mean, Paul is a very brilliant brother. Paul was taught by Yahweh Shai. All right. Paul, get, you, you know, received some deep revelations from our Lord Yahweh Shai. Understand? So Paul was set up by the Lord. 
But if you don't, as it says here, if you're unlearned, which means that you don't study study uh, the scriptures, and unstable, which means that you're given over un, unto your lust, you can't control yourself, then you're going to twist the scriptures unto what? Unto your own destruction. Okay, and they also do this with many other scriptures because they don't study. And ultimately, it's not set up in the spirit for you to receive certain things. All right. The spirit of the Most High, the, the Racha Kadash, has to rest with you for you to understand the Bible. All right. You, the Bible is not just any old book that you can pick up, read it, and understand the, the you know, deeper spiritual meanings of of uh, the scriptures it's not that that type of book you understand because hell you got atheists out there that study the bible would you trust an atheist to teach you the bible just because he got a phd in, in uh, bible studies hell no because you know for a fact <laughs> that the most high that the most high is not dealing with him i don't give a damn what what piece of paper that you got in this kingdom i don't give a damn what piece of paper that you got just because just you got a PhD don't mean that the Most High is, is uh, dealing with you, man. Because ultimately, all all uh, revelation, all understanding is given through the Spirit, the Racha Kadash. So, hey, if you ain't got that, then, hey, all, all, you know, all, all your PhD and, you know, papers that man give you, hey, that, 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 ain't, that ain't nothing, <laughs> you know, compared to the wisdom that the Most High can give. You know, all that is foolishness to the Most High. Understand? So, just wanted to make this a real quick lesson. Hopefully, it was edifying to the Racha Kadash. Call Hello Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Racha Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect. And until next time, DTA of Baba Bar. Shalom.